Hi, yeah, I'm Brad. I'm a member of the IAP, and I'd like to talk to you about anodizing. Mainly because there's a lot of members on IAP nowadays which are turning out metal pens, and other than what you can do with metal to make it a little bit more eye catching, other than polishing it, is really getting into surface finishing, which really leaves you with powder coating or plating or anodizing. Uh, so I'm just going to spend a bit of time talking to you about anodizing and how it's done and how to avoid the pitfalls which I was doing all of the time when I first started learning how to do it. Um, first of all, what is anodizing? Well, anodizing is a oxidized layer which you can build up on the surface of aluminium which you can then soak dye into that oxidized layer before sealing it which gives it colour. Um, to give you an idea, if you turn an aluminium pen such as this one, this is uh, one of the first pens I made um, it looks really nice at the time, all polished up, you know, really shiny, but aluminium in the air will oxidise by itself, and that's why if you look at this now, it's got like a enough white colour to it, so it's lost its shine, and unfortunately, it's not that attractive as it used to be, so <laughs> one way around this happening is to anodise your pens, and uh, that will stop it oxidising in the air, because uh, you've sealed it, but we'll get to sealing later on in the process. Um, to give you an idea, here's a purple one. As you can see, that's been anodized and sealed, and it's got a nice, lovely purple to it. And that looks just as nice as it did when I first made this pen. Um, there's a black. Now, I've cheated a little bit here, because through the middle of the pen, uh, I've chrome-plated the brass tubes. So once I've drilled through it, obviously, you can then see the brass tubes, which are now chrome. So it's a nice black pen with chrome circles on it. And um, today, what we're going to do, because I've just finished making a gent pen, a closed end, as you can see, uh, we're going to anodize this one blue. Uh, we're going to do it in a high gloss finish, not matte. And uh, I'll show you how to do the differences, one, one of which, if you want to go for a matte finish, like uh, both of these pens here, these are both mattes, um, you use caustic soda, and it gives the metal a nice matte finish. Um, if you want it to shine, skip the caustic soda, go straight on to anodizing the pup, you've really got to clean it and uh, we'll get to that later on. Um, other than anodizing, what else can you do with metal to give you an idea? Well, plating, there's a uh, 24 karat gold plated pen and there's a chrome plated pen. So it gives you an idea what you can do with plating and what you can do with anodizing. Uh, with regards to anodizing, lots of different colors available. Um, I personally use a range called Sanadi, which is made by Clarions, and um, it's a professional anodizing dye. It's, uh, a lot of people will talk about using cloves dyes and things, which you can do, but what I tend to find with cloves dyes, it'll fade after time, whereas the uh, professional dyes are well designed to be light fast. This way it will stop them um, fading uh, in natural sunlight. So today we're going to anodize this pen blue, polish it up, give it a nice shine and uh, I'll show you the process step by step as we go. What we do have is a closed end gent pen which I've turned over the last couple of days as you can see. It's just a nice piece of aluminium ready to be made into a nice looking pen. There's your lid. So we have the full body and the lid. I've um, turned a new center band because the gold one on the kit obviously isn't going to go well with a blue pen, so I've turned the centre band out of aluminium, and I'll uh, anodise this at the same time. And uh, the finial as well. Um, <laughs> sorry, but this is already shown on the mounting block. I kind of put it on it just to make sure that it did fit in the hole, and then it sort of like gave itself a nice snug fit, and I didn't really want to take it off after that, because once you get a snug fit, it's perfect. And there's a good chance for us to pull that off now, then um, I wouldn't be able to get it in just as tight as what that has. So it was a bit of potluck really as I was just testing the fit. So I'm going to leave it on there uh, ready for the anodizing. Um, we'll talk about the jig later on. But um, yeah, so we've got a custom finial, we've got a custom center band, we've got the lid and we've got the full body of the pen. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, move on to the next step then I believe. Okay, so the next step, or the first step, what you're going to do when you're anodizing is clean. And I really can't stress this enough, you've really got to scrub the part. So much as a fingerprint, 
and it will anodize the fingerprint onto the piece. A smudge of dirt will stop um, anodizing from actually adhering to the metal. It can act as a insulant and it will stop the uh, part from actually anodizing. So what we do is uh, we use a big tank of hot soapy water with uh, courtesy of Swimbo's washing up liquid and uh, we just got to scrub the part and when you think it's clean scrub it some more and once you've done that um, scrub it some more and once you've done that and you know for a fact it's really clean uh, scrub it some more just to be safe because um, <laughs> it's caught me out a couple of times if that part is not squeaky clean it's not going to give you that finish what you're looking for so don't cut corners on this part um, you really got to put some elbow grease into this and just get it right. So let me get a pair of gloves and uh, we'll crack on and clean these parts which I've turned. And on we go. Make sure you've got latex gloves on. Like I said, any fingerprints are actually going to show up. So uh, really you should be trying to handle the parts as minimal as possible. But obviously as we make pens, that's a little bit difficult because the parts are so small. So as long as you keep your latex gloves on and uh, just like I said earlier, just be really thorough in your cleaning. So I'm just going to start scrubbing these down. Oh, look, one thing I should mention, by the way, anodizing will not hide a poor surface finish. Once you finish machining the part, sand all of the scratches out of it. Anodizing won't cover up scratches. Admittedly, if there's some light surface scratches, which you are going to get with aluminium, uh, blacks can cover them up somewhat, but we're talking really, really light scratches. I don't know if you can actually see the ones on here, but that I'll get away with just. If they were any deeper than that, you'll see it through the anodizing. If anything, the anodizing will enhance it. It's, uh, it sure as hell won't cover it up. So, uh, okay. That's the first part done. Straight into deionized de water or distilled water and on to the next bit. Now as I said earlier uh, you can anodize as a matte finish or a gloss finish and what we're doing here by going straight into the cleaning of the metal like this we're, we're going for a gloss finish. Um, Otherwise, what you would do is take caustic soda, just uh, about five grams to a cup of water of caustic soda, and uh, drop the pieces in there for a couple of minutes. That's all it takes, uh, you know, two to four minutes, round about that. And uh, what you'll get is this milky sort of look all over the metal. It's uh, basically it attacks the metal, it's strong alkali, and it will uh, dissolve the aluminium. So the longer you leave it in there, the smaller your piece will be. So if fit and finish is your thing, which I'm sure it is, uh, you might find that it'll look like you've overturned the piece because you've actually dissolved too much metal off the pen. Um, so be cautious with the caustic soda. And it's also nasty stuff. You know, the, the fumes that come off it are quite nauseous. So you really need good ventilation if you've got that stuff. If possible, do it outside. Um, but yeah, try not to do it indoors if you can. It's not very nice. So you, you get straight to the back of your throat and it's not very good for you. Uh, so yeah, like I say, this is a high gloss, so we're not using any caustic soda in this. And now the center band. Keep dropping because it's so damn fiddly. Come back. There we go. Okay. And then at last, the finial. Obviously, don't worry about doing the back and the stalk of it. Yeah, it's the top which is of interest to you, to us. And there we have our cleaned 
pieces of aluminium ready to be anodized. Uh, so it's moving along swiftly. Let's go on to the next part of the process, shall we? And here we have my homebrew anodizing tank. Now, what we have is uh, two lead cathodes, which is just pieces of lead flashing which I've torn off and folded over the side of a tank. We have a smaller tank in the middle here, and we have a larger tank on the outside, which is mainly for safety. So if anything was to go wrong with this tank, then um, the acid would just spill into uh, the outer tank. Now, I've left some pieces of metal in here to show you what can happen with this stuff. It's Ideally, you want to be leaving this stuff in the garage or something like that. The, the fumes from it uh, are corrosive and um, should, if you are going to keep it inside, you should be building a, uh, a fume extractor hood, but the unit should be staying in so it can actually uh, pump the fumes straight outdoors. Uh, what we actually have here is a piece of aluminium welding wire. Now it just goes to show you what other alloys are in there because it's corroded that much. I'm not going to snap this because it will go everywhere. But this is just brittle. It, this will just snap into pieces. You can actually see it around the actual coils there, how it's split up by itself and crystallized. Now that just goes to show you that aluminium welding rods are not pure aluminium. Okay? And any other metals will go into this tank are going to corrode. So you can't put steel in it. You can't put brass in it, copper or anything else. The only thing we're going to put in here is aluminium, with the exception of titanium. Now, titanium can go into an anodizing tank and you can use it for building your jigs. Uh, jigs are what you hang your pieces onto. And you can buy professional anodizing jigs, which um, are made out of titanium. Grade 2 titanium, which is pure titanium. Uh, again, if it's grade 3, 4, 5, and of course it has blends of other alloys in it, and again, they will corrode in the tank. So the only thing that you should be putting in there is your lead, that won't corrode, and your pens, which are aluminium. Now, the general rule of thumb with these cathodes, now mine's a bit overkill, but that's me for you. I do, I do like to uh, go bigger than I actually need. The surface area of your cathodes should be twice the size or more than the pieces you are anodizing. So for a little tank like this, this is perfect for doing pens. Obviously if I'm dealing in car parts, I'm going to need a bigger tank. Problem with bigger tanks is you need bigger currents, which brings us on to the next point. How much voltage and how much current should we actually be using for the anodizing process? Now, I can tell you now that the surface area of the pieces I'm going to be anodizing today adds up to roughly six inches square. Now, don't forget that if the anodizing liquid, the electrolyte, can actually get inside the part, we're also anodizing the inside of the tubes as well. So uh, we have to take that into consideration when working out the surface areas. Now, a general rule of thumb is 145 milliamps minimum per square inch. Maximum 175 milliamps per square inch. So if we take the surface area of the pen which we're going to anodize today, we know that it's 6 square inches in size. So 6 times 0.145 is 0 0.87 which is 870 milliamps for example so that's our minimum level 870 milliamps and if we were to anodize it on full current at 0 0.175 milliamps per square inch again at six square inches times that by 0 0.75 sorry 175 is going to be 1.05 amps so we need to anodize between 870 milliamps and 1.05 amps. As long as we stay in the middle of that, we'll be okay.